there is a sanskrit word that yog has put lot of emphasis on and that is called swadhyay which means self study now think of it that all day we ask everyone how are you doing how is everything how is life <coughs> but one thing we completely fail to do is to take the time to ask ourselves how am i how am i feeling how am i doing am i happy how's my state of being am i peaceful am i able to think clearly am i joyful am i blissful so we ask everyone these questions but we don't ask our own self so what happens when we don't take the time to ask these questions from our own self then then small little problems come in our way relating to our physical health mental health emotional health or spiritual health we tend to ignore them and we keep ignoring when the problems are small and we continue to operate in our life with full stream fulfilling our daily roles and responsibilities and keep ignoring those small small things that come in the way till such time one fine morning we get up and the problem has now become monstrous and it's coming in the way between me and my doings and when it reaches to that point that's when we address it by scheduling an appointment with a physician and <coughs> when the problem is actually causing the pain we are feeling huge symptoms by that time the that particular disease has entered in the body at least 60 to 70% that's when we start to first pay attention to it and now think about it at the time when the pain has increased the problem has become bigger we still have to continue to fulfill our responsibilities which we continue to do at the same time now we have to help ourselves by reversing that pain by reversing that problem so imagine when we were 100% healthy we ignored it and now we are feeling weak we are in pain and we are continuing to do everything that we are supposed to do at that time now we have to put extra effort to decrease that pain to reverse that problem is it going to be easy we are not used to doing that extra work pain will definitely slow us down it will bring our morale down it will cause some mental stress and strain too so most of the times what happens is we go into sadness it becomes a psychosomatic disease starts with physical and then becomes mental issue also because all of a sudden we are not able to do what we were doing from so many years that puts us behind so we are stressed we sometimes are not then independent we rely upon others to do many things because of the pain so it takes away our peace it takes away our happiness it takes away our inner strength and slowly slowly we start failing in life and all of a sudden one day we notice that we can't even smile so what swadhyay means that if we take the time every day to ask ourselves how am i 
Am I doing fine? Am I happy? Am I peaceful? And if the answer is no, then figure out why no. Find that issue or problem, address it. Kill it from the root when it's small. Think about it. When the plant is small, it's very easy to destroy. You know, weeds, when they're small, they have no thorns, very easy to destroy. But when a weed becomes a big bush full of thorns, it becomes very difficult to destroy. Similarly, the problems are in our life, when the issues relating to work, home, physical and mental health come up and we are in the habit of giving little time for our self-study every day. Just closing our eyes and looking in and saying, how am I today? Am I happy? How am I feeling? What's my inner state of being like? And when the answers are yes and we continue and if for some reason we are not able to say yes, then figure out why and address it and get to the root cause of it and fix it so we never ever have to deal with pain in our life called preparation for a better life every single day. Just like we eat good every day so we don't get sick, we don't just eat good on the day we are sick, right? We eat good, we eat healthy every single day so we don't get sick. Similarly, if we feel good every day in our mind, in our inner state of being, then we will never have any problems. So, the goal is to do self-study. Now, we do that with everything else. We take such better care of our car and we know car is replaceable. We change its oil, filter, put gas in and it's replaceable in this body which cannot be replaced but we tend to put it on the back burner. And what yoga does, what higher knowledge does, what yogic knowledge does, it reminds us, it makes us aware that my child first take care of this vehicle of life. Without this vehicle, everything else is completely meaningless. Now, when we start doing self-study and then when we start doing yogic practices. Through yogic practices and higher knowledge, happiness start to manifest in us. And as we are happy, then we are healthy, we are peaceful, we become very kind. Anything that we have to do, it seems easy. We feel so prepared to deal with the challenges of life. Nothing seems to be hard when you are happy. Your productivity and your creativity increases. And then, when we are happy, a lot of love sprouts. Because when you are happy, then you love everyone. Isn't it? The day you are not happy, you don't want to see anybody's face. Just Get out of here. You know, you like to just be in the four walls, alone, don't want to deal with the world, that is the sad day, oh, I'm not having a good day, please don't talk to me, right? We say that a lot to ourselves and others, to our children and spouses too. Today you take care of everything, I'm not having a good day. But the day I'm happy, oh, give me more. I can handle this, this is nothing. And I can do twice as much and still not get tired. So when I'm happy, there is so much energy. And then there's so much love. Because I start loving everyone. I love being in, in, in the company of people because I'm happy. Our outer world is a projection of what's happening here. If, the, if, if there's something in the outside that we don't like, Look within, there is a movie going on inside. Change that movie. Maybe there is a sad movie playing inside. Change the scene inside and the outer will change for you. Trust me. 
So now when we start doing yogic practices, when we start gaining higher knowledge, we fill ourselves with divine love. So much love starts to sprout through us like a fountain all the times. Then healing begins. Now, medical science that is doing a research, there is a corporation called Gallup Corporation. It's a very big corporation and that's all they do. They do research on mind, body and spirit. That the connection of mind, body and spirit is being researched, tested and then the outcomes are shared with all the clinicians and healthcare professionals. So they did a research and they found that love is such a powerful energy that it heals the inner body automatically. It restores the functions of all the organs within our body and it heals it 24-7. It's continuously healing when we are feeling so much love in our heart. So, in science, in science, there is a term, it's called homeostasis in biology. It's called restoration of homeostasis. What that is, that in our body, what medical science says and the research shows, in our body, there are small, small thermostats. Thousands of small, small thermostats that are being regulated by themselves. For example, there is a thermostat of, that monitors our blood sugar level. So our blood sugar level within our body has to stay within a particular range. And when it goes above that range, then we have diabetes, sugar problem. And when it goes below, then we have other problems. Similarly, there is a thermostat that monitors and regulates our blood pressure. So our blood pressure is supposed to be between 120 and 80, over 80. And when it goes up above that range, then we have high blood pressure, hypertension. And when it goes below that, then we have hypotension. Same thing with our hormones. Our hormones within our body are being regulated by a thermostat. So thousands of thermostats, small, small ones, mini, mini ones, you know, they're taking care of each and every function of our body. Like for example, our red blood cells, our white blood cells, our platelet counts, all are being regulated. The new cells are being generated, the old cells are dying and exiting the body, the anabolism, metabolism and catabolism of the body is being regulated by a thermostat, our digestion system. It is also being regulated so that whatever we eat, through that system, it breaks down into salts, minerals, juices and then all of that is merged in the bloodstream and we become healthier and the waste is exited through the system. Now these, all of these thermostats, they start to regulate better when there is love. For example, think about it when the baby is born. Now, babies thermostats are they're, they're very um, unmature. So, their immunity is very low, and that's why if we expose baby to uh, heat or cold, baby can get sick with related diseases very easily because of the immunity being low. But what protects baby from being sick is the motherly love. When mother cuddles the baby, touches it, hugs it, loves the baby, gives her full attention, her facial expressions, her hugs, all of that helps the baby to stay healthy in spite of the fact that baby's immunity is very low. The thermostats are very immature, imbalanced. Similarly, we all adults need the same. 
affection, care, and attention. So, affection is what? When we know that we have people in our life who love us, we love them. There is that feeling of love, caring, touching, hugging, patting, you know, all of this. Then attention. Attention is that I am being heard, that someone cares. When I have something to say, there is someone who can listen to me, someone who cares to hear me. I feel very good that I have some very, very sweet, loving people in my life who care to listen. And then there is attention. That someone gives their fine attention to me and I do the same. So, love, affection, attention. When we have these loving, caring feelings, expressions in our life, then, then what happens? The thermostats of our body start to restore the healing function 24-7. It's done automatically. Now, that's not yoga. That's the medical science that's saying it. The science that is researching on mind, body and spirit is now saying and they're training all the clinicians, heart surgeons, letting them know that in addition to providing the medical treatment, keep that in mind. Because physicians tend to think that if they are treating two patients with the same diagnosis, why is it that one dies and one is alive and feels very good? Same diagnosis, same problem, same treatment, one, one is reacting so positively and the other one is so negatively. Why? Because of these other factors. So that's when the research started. So now, yogic science is way ahead of medical science. And what, what yogic science teaches us? Listen to this. It says, yes, my child, loving energy is very important, but don't expect that love from others. First, create love for your own self. Love yourself the way you are. So when you sit and do swadhyay, when you sit and do self-study, Love yourself. When you close your eyes and you move within, feel your heart and love it. Feel your lungs and love it. Feel your arms, your hands, your each and every part of you. And love yourself. Because when you start to loving your own self and generate a lot of love within your heart, that's when you are empowered to love others. If you don't have love inside and you're a dry person, then you cannot love anybody else. And remember, when you love others, what you give to others is what comes back to you. So when you start first loving yourself and then share that love with others, then no matter where you go, the same love will come back to you, but thousand times more. It's going to be manifested. You give it in a seed form and it comes back in a tree form. And now the saga continues. So you give love and then you're receiving love. And then you give love and you're receiving love. And that's how the energy starts to flow. Then what happens? Slowly, slowly when you become very loving, 24-7 only loving healing expressions come out of your way. Then what happens? When you sit in meditation, when you do yogic practices, the same Worldly love is transformed into divine love. The same worldly love, that love that you have for yourself and for others, now is transformed into a divine love. And then miracles start to happen. You know how? Because when we have worldly love, then it's conditional. When I love someone, the other person will love me back but one day I can't love that person that much or for some reason the person is not happy with me I won't get that love it's conditional but when I sit in meditation and I merge with the divine love and the divine love starts to flow through me it's unconditional there are no conditions attached 
All I need to do is shut my mind, my eyes, my ears to the outer world, put my back to the world and front to the divine. And love, healing starts instantly. Then the worldly love is beautiful but it has expectations. I will love you if you do this for me. Sounds familiar? Right? I will love you if you buy me a gift. Right? I will love my kids if they get A+. Plus. I love my husband if he buys me a birthday present. He didn't remember. Oh God, I don't love it. It comes and goes. Based upon expectations met or not met. Right? But when I start sitting in meditation and merge with the divine love, then there are no expectations, there is no discrimination. Whosoever will sit, will be folded, will be wrapped in that love that insulates you from the pain that this world gives you. It's unconditional, no expectations attached. Three, the worldly love slowly grows. So that you meet somebody and you like them and gradually the love grows. It's gradual and it comes and goes. Divine love when we sit in meditation, instant, you do and achieve, you do and achieve. The moment you sit, like last week when we sat in meditation, after that so many of you came to me and said, oh, that's so good. What was that? Instant. You sat in meditation for five minutes, Instantly you felt as if someone's holding you, embracing you, giving you a loving hug, healing you. Felt so good. All we did was a little bit advanced meditation last time. Five minutes and we felt so happy. That happiness is unparalleled. So, it, it's instant. Instantly we can create that that loving healing power and then what's next the last thing is for worldly love you do have to put a lot of effort because there's so many people to win the hearts of everyone but once you're transformed you sit in meditation once you have the divine love that's a master key when you have divine love in your heart, everyone loves you. So now we have a choice either to have each individual key to the door of everyone's heart or we have one master key. We have one master key that opens the locks of every heart and allows the love to, to stream out of them. That's the choice we have. So when we start doing Swadhyay, self-study every morning, with this kind of awareness, we start feeling ourselves, how am I? What's my inner state of being like? Am I happy? We start loving ourselves, we start giving a lot of affection to ourselves, we start caring for ourselves, we start giving attention that is needed to ourselves then we become happier every day, healthier every day. That's when our today is better than yesterday, our tomorrow is better than today and we keep going upwards in life and that is the goal of life. We empower ourselves, our life starts to flow upwards. So with these words of wisdom, we are going to start today's session. Let's go ahead and stand up.